Hello and welcome to one and all. So we will continue with the institutional sources of agricultural credit. Okay. So we have finished with the cooperatives, isn't it? So I mentioned to you that the cooperatives it has the three tier structure: short term, at the short term and medium term is organized at the three tier structure. At the bottom level, we have the primary agricultural credit societies, and then the district level. district cooperative credit society and the top at the apex of the state level we have the state cooperative credit banks okay so now and apart from that uh, we, uh, we have the long term loans which are provided by the primary cooperative agriculture and rural development banks and state cooperative agriculture and rural development banks okay so now uh, the next major source of institutional source of credit to the farmers is the commercial banks so the commercial banks basically initially that is initially in the sense that before nationalization so that is prior to nationalization of 14 banks in 1969 and six more banks in 1980 So when I say prior to nationalization, fourteen banks and uh, six more banks in nineteen eighty, meaning that it was uh, under the private sector. Okay, the so state bank and all they were uh, established by the Britishers, which is which was called the Imperial Bank of India. So till nineteen sixty nine, it was run under the private sector. So nationalization nineteen sixty nine for the first time the government took over. 14 banks from the private sector so when the government took over that is what what is called as the nationalization okay anything which is taken over by the government any area any company or any activity which is taken over by the government that is what we call it as a nationalization okay so 14 banks were initially taken over by the government nationalized by the government in 1969 and six more banks were taken over by the government in 1980 so now they all become the public sector scheduled banks which is coming under the public sector okay so before nationalization of these banks the commercial banks were mainly lending loans for the industrial purpose but once after the nationalization of commercial banks on the advice of the reserve bank of india and nabard and all the commercial banks were uh, asked to lend loans even to the agri even for the agricultural purpose okay so before that prior to all this nationalization of banks 1980 commercial banks were lending loans mainly to industrial sector so they were having i mean catering only the industrial finance but after uh, nationalization only the share of commercial banks increased in the agricultural credit so during this period of time it uh, the commercial banks share was only to agricultural sector approximately it was only 0.7 i write it so it was only 0.7% of the in agricultural credit in 1961 62 okay so of the total institutional source of credit credit the commercial bank's share was only 0.7% but after nationalization so after nationalization the share of commercial banks in the total institutional credit to agriculture increased and also the number of branches of commercial banks also expanded i mean the commercial banks the branches of commercial banks were expanded in almost all the villages in the country so after nationalization the number of branches of commercial banks at rural level increased and its share of institutional credit
to agriculture increased tremendously increased to almost 70% so from 0.7% the share of agricultural credit by the commercial banks increased to 70% okay so that was the i mean now the commercial banks they play a dominant role in the uh, in lending of rural credit in the country okay then the next source of main source of agriculture institutional source of agricultural credit is the region by the regional rural banks popularly known as the rrbs see regional rural banks uh, actually the main uh, the commercial banks cannot be established of course even though the branches of the commercial banks expanded to almost all, most of the villages in the country but there are some areas the commercial bank because of the geographical conditions or location or whatever it is it will not it might not be feasible for a, a commercial bank to open its branch in some of the areas so wherever because of that reason where the, the commercial banks could not be developed so in order to bridge the gap the regional rural banks were established by the government by the country and the main difference the main feature of the regional rural banks is that i mean how it differs from the commercial banks see the operations of the commercial banks spread all over the country and sometimes i mean they have the branches abroad also but whereas the regional rural banks mostly it is established in those areas i mean started with the establishment in only in those areas where there are no banking facilities so in order to provide the banking facilities to the people in those areas the regional rural banks were established and the activities of the regional rural banks is no, is confined only to that particular local, locality in that particular only in that particular area it will not go beyond that particular area so that is the main speciality of the regional rural banks and also i mean each and every rural bank is sponsored by a commercial bank that is one thing and the members i mean the staff members of the regional rural banks they speak the same vernacular language which is uh, spoken by the local people over here over in that particular area and they lend loans to all the poorer sections of the population be belonging in that particular area so that is the regional rural banks okay so basically rrbs or they are basically the government owned scheduled commercial banks of india in the sense that they are all sponsored by the the, the respective state government and the uh, uh, once commercial bank will be sponsoring them commercial banks of india that operate at the regional level operate at the so their activities are confined only to that particular region it won't extend beyond that in different states of india see for example in uh, here we are having telangana gramina bank so this is an example of regional rural bank uh, here okay and initially five rrbs were established in 1975 october 2nd 1975 so what is their aim that, that was the i mean first first time the rrbs were established in 1975 and that too initially five rrbs were established in the country so the main aim of rrbs is to provide cheap credit to rural people so when i say rural people anyone comprising of it can be small and marginal farmers not necessarily it has to be related only to 
agriculture any poor poor rural person the rrb will lend the loan farmers landless laborers or rural artisans who are involved in the handicrafts and all and anyone else and other rural residents anyone who are having the small, i mean lesser money income so for all those people the rrbs will lend the loans rural residents who earn very less income i mean where it is wherever the commercial banks so, so it, it, uh, it was established in all those places where there are no banking facility so why because as i mentioned as commercial banks could not be established there, uh, because for whatever might be the reasons maybe because of uh, there is no feasibility of establishing a commercial bank so in order to fill up that uh, geographical gap of, of the commercial banks this rrbs were established by the government so five uh, five rrbs were established in 1975 and as of now that is as of april 1st 2020 there are 43 rrbs in the country okay in established in different different states of the country just like we have the telangana gramin bank here so like that in different different states they have their own rrbs established in their respective states okay and these are all the major institutional sources of credit of the agri providing agricultural credit in the country so as per because of the establishment of all these institutional sources of credit by the government so as per the report rbi report of 2016 it was 72% of agricultural credit so 72% of the agricultural credit was is is by the institutional sources so earlier we have seen only 7% by the institutional sources and 93% by the non institutional sources isn't it at the time of 1951 52 so now you can see that 72% of the agricultural credit is by the institutional sources and only 28% by non institutional sources of credit so finally the grip of the money lenders and the other non institutional sources have been uh, removed so now the institutional sources are playing a major role in providing the agricultural credit to the farmers so this is again another major uh, measure undertaken by the government to improve the conditions of the farmers and credit is the life blood isn't it so without finance nothing can be done so these are all the various steps taken by the government to provide or lend credit lend loans to the rural people at lesser rate of interest okay so with this we finish with the i mean sources of agricultural credit but there is a top apex uh, bank is there which is just called the nabab okay which i will explain to you in my next class okay so if you find this video useful please like share and subscribe and if you have any doubts or suggestions please mention it in the comment box okay so until my next class take care bye bye